this lecture we'll talk about groups and teams or groups and teams getting organized as groups regardless of how they are organized most the most essential work in business occurs in individual work groups these are groups and teams so we'll take a closer look at them although some experts do not make a distinction between groups and teams in recent years there's been a gradual shift towards an emphasis on teams and managing them to enhance individual organizational success traditionally a group has been divided has been defined as two or more individuals who communicate with one another share a common identity and have a common goal a team is a small group whose members have complementary skills have a common purpose goals and approach and hold themselves mutually accountable all teams are groups but not all groups are teams a type of group uh, the, the type of groups to, that an organization establishes depends upon the tasks it needs to accomplish in the situation it faces some specific kinds of groups and teams include committees task forces project teams product development teams quality assurance teams and self-directed work teams all of these can be virtual or they could be on site virtual teams in virtual teams employees from different locations rely on email audio conferencing video conferencing faxes internet or other technological tools to accomplish their goals virtual teams are becoming a part of everyday business and the number of employees working remotely from their employer increases more than 80 percent and has increased more than 80 percent over the last several years this table shows some of the differences between groups and teams and how to think about them um, for example uh, groups tend to have a strong leader can have a strong leader individual accountability um, a team sometimes shares leadership roles because depending upon what the particular task is the expert or the specialist can work in those general areas um, there are different examples of how working groups and teams um, might operate separately or differently um, sometimes work groups for example have efficient meetings or they, they run efficient meetings with an agenda and a time frame and all this pulling things together but sometimes but a team might have more open ended discussion active problem solving many different perspectives coming together uh, in real time to solve a uh, an emerging problem if you will so see, here, here are some examples organizations can make use of specialized groups uh, two of which are presented on this slide committees and task forces a committee is usually a permanent formal group that does some specific task for example many firms have a compensation or finance committee to examine the effectiveness of these areas of operations as well as the need for possible changes a task force is a temporary group so a committee is a standing group task force is a temporary group of individuals who are responsible for bringing about a particular change they typically come from multiple departments and various levels of the organization task force membership is usually based upon expertise rather than organizational position that is somebody that knows the problem knows how potential solutions that sort of thing regardless of their level occasionally a task force may be formed from individuals outside the company or individuals outside the company may be, may come in to be part of a task force on a team for example a consultant or a specialist in some particular area for example um, in cybersecurity one might bring in an outside expert on that task force the United States the use of teams and organizations is fairly widespread they're typically formed because they have been found to increase productivity quality and competitiveness teams are beneficial because they pull the members knowledge and skills and they can make greater use of them than individuals working alone it's important to point out that effective teams are usually small in number no more than five members organizations employ different types of teams depending upon what they wish to accomplish the more common types of teams are listed on this on this slide and the following slide and we'll talk about them a little bit 
project teams and product development teams, quality assurance teams. Uh, they're also called quality circles. And the highest form of team functioning, uh, which is the self-directed work teams, recurred, re referred to as the SDWT. You can see here on this slide we have project teams. They're groups that are similar to task forces, which normally run their operations and have control over a specific work project. Their project teams aren't necessarily task forces. They might be part of normal business operation, and you set up a product te or project team when you're implementing a product or a marketing plan or something like that, whereas a task force is usually addressing a problem that is a one-time event. Product development teams are a specific type of project team that's formed to devise, design, and implement a new product. We also have quality assurance teams, sometimes called called quality circles. These are small groups of workers that are brought together throughout the organization to solve specific quality and productivity or service problems or to monitor and make sure quality remains at a certain level. We'll talk about that in a later module. Self-directed work teams are a group of employees that are responsible for the entire work process or a segment of that process that delivers a product or to an internal or to an external company. They're called self-directed because the task of, a, of completing the project effectively and efficiently is delegated to the team, not necessarily to an individual who then organizes the team of, of direct reports. Instead, this is a team that is given the task, and the team then is self-directs to solve the problem and address the work issue.